What the fuck? What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of Chelsea's quite frankly insane 4-4 draw with Ajax at home in the Champions League. Absolute box office, loads of mental stuff happened. This group is mental, this game was mental, but there's loads and loads of positives as well as just entertaining drama. We're going to talk about that in today's review. Remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you haven't yet done so and click the bell notifications icon because I upload daily. Please keep up with the content. Oh yeah, like the video, because hopefully you do like the video. And thanks to everybody who swung by the live stream after the game and people who are joining the Discord server to talk to me about football. Loads of fun, it's great. Link in description. All right, so usually when I do these match reviews, right, I'm gonna I pull up the analysis screen, which I'm about to do, and I sort of run you through every talking point of the game, or certainly one that I find worthy talking about now. I can't do that in this video because quite frankly, it would take hours. But I'm gonna run you through like the goals and maybe the cards or something and just do player performances, talk about the general stuff and where that leaves Chelsea in the group and then possibly finally lay down and have a heart attack. So on that, let's pull up the analysis screen. All right, next to me you have the who scored match center graphic for statistics of the game for you to soak up while I talk about some football. You must forgive me for using my phone to run through what happened because there's no way I'm going to remember. Right, the game, <laughs> the game kicks off and in the second minute, Tammy Abraham scores an own goal. It's a set piece goal conceded yet again. I actually feel... I feel like this is a little bit unfortunate because Tammy kind of had to go for this ball. He tries to clear it, but he's just obviously not good at clearing balls with like that. He's a striker. This is something he has to work on. It's a little bit unlucky and obviously early nerves and stuff, but I understand why he went for it. And it's a bit of misfortune, 1-0 to Ajax. But Chelsea go up the other end four minutes, two minutes later and win a penalty. I think it's Christian Pulisic, I believe. I think he's like double foul, actually. And yet, yeah, guess he steps up. Big man Jorginho with his... Sublime technique converts one all. You're right. Okay, start again. Start again. Take a breath. Four minutes in. It's one all. Let's get into the game. Let's try and win this. In the 20th minute, undone again by a dead ball situation. Hakim Ziyech like crossing it in. Quincy Promise running in behind, heading it in. It's a really nice goal. The ball in so so nice from Ziyech. He finally came alive in this game. He was a bit quiet in Amsterdam, but this game he was involved with a lot of good that Ajax did and uh, Aspliquet should have been picking up Promise a bit better. Frustrating, it was a nice goal but frustrating. So in the 31st and 33rd minute, the space of two minutes, both Ajax centre backs get booked, they both get yellows. This is an important part of the narrative that is the story of this mental game. Come off the 35th minute, Kepa Rita Balaga, own goal. This is a little bit unfortunate. He didn't have the best game, Kepa. He actually made an amazing save at the end, which saved Chelsea a point. But again, Zayak, he had a free kick in like, oh, it wasn't, I don't think it was a corner, I think it was a free kick, basically from the byline. Crosses it in, it curls into the top corner. I think maybe Kepa, I know he's quite small, maybe like Courtois saves that. But um, it was a weird one. He sort of knocks onto the bar, comes back off his nose and goes in. So it's a Riza Balaga own goal. Again, you probably should be doing better, but it's a little bit unfortunate if you ask me. 3-1 Ajax. And then before half time, it goes up and down a little bit and both Fikayo Tomori and Cesar Azpilicueta are booked. So half time, Ajax 3, Chelsea 1. Frustrating. Marcus Alonso was having a terrible first half and he actually comes off for Rhys James. So Azpilicueta moves back to left back like he did a few years ago. And Rhys James plays in the right back position and he was excellent he supercharged that game we all sort of wax lyrical about Reese James on this channel as does loads of Chelsea fans and football people and yeah he's proving when he's on the pitch that he's a weapon Chelsea are massively on top in the earlier stages in the first half the throughout the whole 10 minutes they're jumping on Ajax Ajax look a bit rattled but against the run of play they score a goal Donny van der Beek assist that man again Hakim Ziyech now it's a little bit it's it, this is the first piece of like real naive defending for me because they've been on top they've been pressuring Ajax 
the Ajax come down the other end and they play a ball in and Van der Beek is in just acres, maybe like, I don't know what, eight yards out from goal or maybe 10 yards out from goal. He's standing there in acres, the ball comes to his feet. To be fair to him, it's an amazing touch to stop it and he just slots it away beautifully. It's a good touch and finish, but he's in absolute acres. That was naive defending from Chelsea. Right, let's see, where are we? Oh yeah, so sadly for Mason Mount, he gets injured again. Both his home Champions League games, he's come off injured. Valencia and now this game. So Hudson Adoy comes on for him, and I think Pulisic moves into the number 10. Poor lad. Quincy Promise gets booked to just join the elite level of bookings. 63rd minute. Chelsea are putting the pressure on. There's a scramble in the opposition box. Tammy Abraham gets the assist, apparently, somehow. Cesar Espelicueta slots home a goal to make it 2-4. So Chelsea are in the ascendancy here. They're looking better. I mean, in the second half, they were a lot better, and they conceded against the run of play. So the captain gets one back. And you know what? I was getting on Espelicueta's back in the first half. Like Alonso, he wasn't doing very well, but he does so much better in this second half. And then in the following minutes, the madness happens. In short, in the space of 10 seconds, both Ajax centre-backs both receive their second yellow and get sent off, and Chelsea get a penalty. The way this happens is, Chelsea are moving forward and play. I think Tammy's fouled by Blind, it is a yellow card, he can't have any qualms with that. Second yellow, you're going off, but because they have an advantage, they carry on playing. Uh, they go into the box, hudson Doy picks the ball up, and the ball hits Veltman's hand in the box. Um, you wouldn't see that given in the Premier League, but I know in Europe they're different with handballs in the box. They're very, very like anal with that. So it's a, it's a yellow, yellow card and a penalty. So if you're an Ajax fan at the moment, you're absolutely screwing. But it's just how it went. They lost two players, conceded the penalty. Jorginho steps up again, hop, skip and a jump, converts, 3-4. Chelsea Ajax. So Ajax are down to nine men and they're under pressure now. They make Ten Hag makes two changes to try and sort things out and get some like defensive options in there. But it is one way traffic just going forwards from here. In the 74th minute, Reese James scores an excellent goal to level it up in the Champions League at home in Stamford Bridge for his first Champions League goal. What a special player this kid is. The celebration scenes were absolutely immense. Superb. And there's 18 minutes to go plus stoppage time here, so you think it's on. Cesar's Pelicueta would go on with quite a few minutes from time to score what would seem like the winner. It was a great goal. Stamford Bridge are up, so it's 5 4. They scored the winner, an absolute classic. But again, to go back to how anal UEFA are, or the European officials are when it comes to handball in the box, it comes off Tammy Abraham's arm before it lands to Azpilicueta, you know, again, might not be given in the Premier League, but because of the law, they have to disallow it when they look back. It remains 4-4, Michy Batshuayi nearly scores the winner in like the dying minutes, um, but yeah, Onana makes an amazing save when he gets down and stops it. Kepa also makes a really good save, so both teams could have nicked it at the end. Full-time whistle, Chelsea 4, IX 4. Absolutely insane scenes. As you can see on the stats, Chelsea were dominant and with shots and stuff, but you know, obviously, they had like best part of 20 minutes, or they had 17 minutes with two extra men, but this game was exciting despite the red cards, despite the dismissals, despite the VARs. It's easy to get wrapped up in all of that. It was an incredibly exciting game. Both teams went out to play football. Both teams displayed magnificent football. Chelsea, for all their naivety at times, was just superb. One thing worth mentioning, the fact how there was only four minutes stoppage time was nothing short of a disgrace. It should have been seven or eight. Um, if you tally up this, the fact how there were five substitutions and the amount of goals, that should have been four or five minutes anyway. But despite the sending offs, the red cards, the, you know, everything, the injuries with Mason Mount, should have been eight minutes, but it was only four. So Chelsea can feel a little bit hard done by in that sense, but they also had the rub of the green in getting penalties and opposition players sent off. So just madness. And at the end of this game week in the Champions League, Valencia, Chelsea and Ajax are all on seven points and Lille are on one. So this group, anyone can miss out. Out of those top three, anyone can miss out um, qualifying for the next round. So it's intense. And I don't really know how Chelsea will feel about this. Two points dropped or a point gained. Ugh. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about player performances and get rid of the analysis screen. Okay, so players played well in this game. Kovacic was really good. He completed like eight dribbles or something insane. Jorginho was a very, very smooth operator throughout, as he has been usually. And obviously, he converted both penalties. Both centre-backs were really quite decent. 
And yes, I'm going to mention Kurt Zuma's driving run when he picked up the ball from like the centre half area, drove up the pitch 70 yards, doing step overs, just dribbling around the whole team. <laughs> Line run up and shot it into Rose Ed. And we all remember, yes, he's a centre half. <laughs> just amazing scenes. The thing is, the only really notable, really negative performance in this game for me was Marcus Alonso. He's really, really slow. And when you're coming up against like a teenage Ajax attacking side, of course, they're going to roast you. So I think Lampard, I understand why he put Alonso in because Emerson's only just come back to fitness. He played three days ago. Alonso's rested. But, you know, had he known, maybe it would have been smart to just not play Alonso and start Reese James at right back. But you can understand, hindsight's 2020, right? So you can understand why Lampard did that. But to be honest, actually, this was one of the games where it would kind of be almost, not silly, but I just don't think I should go through player performances because this was bigger than that. This game personifies... Frank Lampard's Chelsea, right? Now let me explain. It was about belief. It was about teamwork. It was circa Chelsea 2004 to 2012, not knowing when you would be. Never say die, never die. Believe to the end, right? Frank Lampard got that into his players. Even at 4-1 down, they believed. And it's a team unity that saw them through. And this game for Ajax as well, it personifies young attacking teams but really naive. I mean, you can argue the naivety from Ajax was the sending off, and that comes from their centre-backs, who I don't know how old Veltman is, but Blint certainly been around the block, and they shouldn't be doing that. But the naivety from Chelsea's side was giving away these silly free kicks. If Chelsea didn't give away these free kicks, um, they think they just get overexcited, they're charged up from all the attacking football they're playing. But if they didn't give away these free kicks, they would have won this game. Not comfortably, but they would have won it. And to be fair to Ajax, they were being really smart with these free kicks. They knew Chelsea had like the height advantage, um, and Chelsea have been better defending set pieces recently with the hybrid zonal marking, man marking shift. So they weren't putting them into the areas where a conventional Premier League opposition would put them. They were putting them 10 yards out and landing them in awkward places to put a second ball in, which were they were getting onto and scoring goals or causing Chelsea problems. So really, this was a game of team performances, team spirit and just box office narrative. It wasn't a game for the individual player, apart from maybe Marcus Alonso being a negative one, but it was about Chelsea being exciting again, getting some of their DNA back of the belief never die but also just being really entertaining for the neutral this was a great game young Chelsea versus young Ajax 4-4 box office great goals great celebrations loads of youngsters loads of academy kids from Chelsea celebrating together it was just a superb game anyway I want to hear your thoughts on the game get down in the comments below let me know your thoughts of how you think it went how do you think this group's gonna finish man let me know that remember to like the video if you've enjoyed the content and to follow me on social media at football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter remember you can join the discord server via the patreon link in the description subscribe if you haven't yet guys I'm out you enjoy the football and I'll see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck I'ma get it how I'm living I'ma walk the walk outline my lines I rap through thought body bag the verse outline the chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper sorry I don't I love me baby